What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're taking a look at a title called Core Breaker. This one surprised me. They've got like a little tiny demo out right now made by a small team on itch.io that you can play right this second for feedback purposes. They do have a Steam page that's kind of there just to hold the name and kind of hype up the game. But this is actually a solid little piece of roguelike work. If you haven't seen this game before, Codebreaker is a platforming roguelike a la something like Rogue Legacy or something like Neon Abyss with very tight controls, very good shooting, very good sound design, a fantastic soundtrack. And look at this pixel art, dude. It's just utterly gorgeous. And so anyways, we're going to dive on in today for about 25 minutes and see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after watching this, you did want to get the game, I got a linkies for you down below. It'll take you to the itch.io page so that you can download the zip for the demo. I'll also have the Steam page down there, so maybe you can wish list it for when the game goes up for cash. But ultimately, the premise of this game is that you are a robot that is awakened and humanity is gone. And the world is destroyed. It's post-apocalyptic. And so you're diving down into a bunker to battle other raving lunatic robots in order to figure out what happened to humanity. Along the way, you're going to be collecting currency. You're going to be upgrading your guns. You're going to be upgrading your character. This game does have roguelite progression, which means that you can buy upgrades and things that will persist throughout all of your runs that make you a little bit stronger and give you a better chance at completing the goal. But anyways, before I waste any more time talking, let's go ahead and play. For right now, I am playing on a controller. I find that games like this with a lot of wall jumping and a lot of ping-ponging around the map tend to play better with a controller. One of the few things that console controls do better than PC controls, if I do say so myself. But I am pleased to report I did a couple of runs using the keyboard controls, and they are perfectly fine. Uh, it's was to move, space to jump, and then your mouse is basically how you fire your gun. And so it worked out great, but for the purposes of precise movements, I decided I was going to do this video using an Xbox controller. So that's why you're going to see Xbox prompts coming up on the screen over the course of this playthrough. So let's head to the underworld. I'm headed to robot hell. All right, so we'll go to the left. And we've got a bunch of little crazy robots down here that really want the beef. There's no time limit on the rooms. Uh, so you can take your time and kind of tactically move to eliminate these guys if you want to. And that's exactly what I did right there. I had a feeling they were going to run me down before I could destroy them all. Gunfire in this game is only horizontal, which is part of the challenge. Is that sometimes lining up an attack on an enemy that's not exactly horizontal or is crawling on a wall, it injects a little bit of chaos to the experience that opens the player up for retaliations. Uh, usually, I'm a fan of games that allow you to omnidirectionally aim, but I think that in the case of this game, that would actually be a mistake. Uh, the game does not have damage on touch, by the way. That wasn't me getting damaged by the enemy when I touched him. He shot me in my face, and boy, oh boy, did you see that hit feedback right there? That is utterly fantastic hit feedback. Whenever I talk about a game, and I'm like, this game has wispy hit feedback, and I recommend that they tighten that up, that right there is exactly what I'm talking about. That is the holotype example, in my opinion, of hit feedback done well. So much so that I just sab- there's not a whole lot of healing in this game. I just sabotaged my run to show that to you, just because it's so good. Uh, it has really, really, really good feeling hit feedback. Like, it is very difficult in this game to not know that you just got hit by something. Alright, so another robot eliminated. Let's go ahead and cut to the left. I would like, yeah, that guy right there lights off a bomb when you kill him, and I swear to God, like, all of my deaths are from those guys right there that, see, like, that guy, we don't want to be near you. Uh, yeah, I got a dash over this way. There is a dash command in this game, by the way. I may have to do something crazy right there. I got, I got a little bit wild. Those little pips that you see me picking up, those are coins. We use those at shops to buy upgrades or to buy weapons or to buy, like, modifiers. Oh boy, oh boy, okay, all right. A little chaotic in here. Could definitely be less chaotic. I'm actually super surprised that I made it through that without getting a hit snaked off on me. It looks like this was actually just a big, giant dead end. There's no hitching in between map tiles, like as you're moving in between them. It seems like the game has it preloaded or something else like that. It's very, very smooth. The transitions feel pretty much perfect to me. And this game is actually kind of the surprise of the day for me. I actually, I checked it out because it had really, really cool, like, key art, which you probably saw on the thumbnail for today's video. And I was like, huh, what is this? Like, I, I try, I don't go on itch.io very often because I, I find that their platform is just non-navigable. It's a, it's a website that's really, really hard to find what you're looking for or to browse new titles on. They've gotten better at it over the year, but I tend to avoid 
the platform for that reason. Uh, but they got me with this one. I came through and I was just like, man, what is this game? Ooh, recover ammo. I'm going to take that even though we don't have an extra gun right now. Oh, boy. Yeah, that might have been... That might have been poor life planning on my part. Luckily, I managed to bail myself via the power of DACA. But there are times where DACA wouldn't have saved me right there. Looks like there's a gun on our left, so we should probably go get a gun maybe. Oh, maybe it's just a fight room. I don't know. It has a little gun icon on it, so I thought it was like a gun room. Oh, it is. A flamethrower. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Give him a little bit of the werfer, Hans. All right, so what do we have over here? We've got a gun shop. We could get a laser gun. Uh, we could do a bazooka, or we could get another flamethrower. Right now, we already have a flamethrower, though, and our ammo is looking pretty good. So I don't think we need to swap out a good thing already. I think we're pretty much super solid right now. Okay, flamethrower seems to be working overtime. I need to figure out a way to get into this nook over here. This is going to be sketchy. Oh, he died. Nice. And we got a health pickup. Those are actually fairly rare. I found that the game is a little bit stingy with healing uh, from my plays, and so I wasn't expecting to get any help here, and of course, promptly, I lost it to a suicide bomber. Problem with the flamethrower I'm seeing so far is that the flamethrower does not put out a lot of damage. Uh, I gotta figure out a path. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, there's just... With the way that they're set up, there was just no way to get on in there. In order to get around that, I mean, I might have been able to pull off a... I don't know how I'm going to get this guy. Uh, like so? Yeah, there we go. i uh, get my ammo refilled real fast, and we'll head downwards. Hopefully that guy burns to death. There we go. I'd rather not dodge his attacks. Okay, so that's the weakness of the flamethrower is that the direct damage... I jumped right into it, dude. I saw it coming, and I jumped right into it. Uh, the arrow shooter took us out. It wasn't an arrow what laid us low. It was a plasma blast, something quite a bit more sophisticated, but I'm not going to split hairs. In between runs, you can talk to the vendor over here, and the vendor will have various upgrades that either introduce new mechanics like wall jumping or dashing, or you can just take things like straight HP increases. So there you go. I don't know how many upgrades are available inside of this demo. It does strike me that this is like a very, very early demo of the game, like everything is not in yet. But I will say this, this is a very tight, very cogent demo that absolutely has an awareness of its own identity and what it wants to be. It's kind of barking up that Revita uh, neon abyss tree, but in kind of like a different way. That's actually kind of how I would describe it is it's like Revita, but it's a little bit tighter and a little bit less moody. And moody games never really quite did it for me. I don't really play video games to analyze my relationship with my mother, you know what I mean? Like, that's never been, that's why I never got into walking simulators and stuff either. It's just like, eh, I get that this is a deep personal experience for someone that created this thing to, like, get maybe one of their hang-ups off their chest with the world or the way it all works. I can understand that, and I can also empathize with that, but it's not really what I'm looking for in a video game, me personally. Video games have always kind of been my unwind time, and very, very heavy concepts in video games... Uh, they tend to just bum me out. I don't like... Oh, I slid on the wall on accident. I was like, what happened here? Oh, boy. Okay, got away with that one. Just barely. We do have a heal across the map that I can go snag. A laser gun. Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that feels good. I like that. A little bit of my laser. Grab my heal real fast. I can't tell you how much I love the fact that, like Binding of Isaac, the stuff that you can use later on, like heals, stay on the ground. Uh, we have... Oh, it's got a really slow fire rate, though. And it's kind of... Okay, so the hitbox is a little bit weird. Like, the edges actually go through the enemy and don't count. Gotcha. Like, it's very, very... So, like, what I mean right there, let me explain. So, when I fire the gun, the very, very edges of the laser, they don't count. It's only... It's very, very small. You can only perceive it while playing, but it's like a half a millimeter of the laser doesn't really count. The enemy can kind of sink down into it for a second. Uh, we've got ammunition, we've got rich, we've got big sale. All right. I mean, maybe I'll go back and watch it. Maybe in slow motion. This is a very fast-paced game. So maybe in slow motion I missed something there. Uh, yeah, hopefully my dash gets me through. There we go. Ooh, that was a very, very satisfying explosion. Uh, maybe amp up the sound of the picking up the little crystals, like the coins. Give it more like of a jingly, like something a little bit more perceptible. As of right now, you can't hear like a ting, 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 ting or anything when you pick up the crystals, and I do feel like that would make it feel a lot better to pick up the crystals. Uh, yeah, I don't... 
hardly know what my plan is right now. Uh, panic is my plan. There we go. Got him. All right. So let me get my crystals here. Bait him into firing that way and then get him right there. I like this laser gun. I wish that its fire rate was a little bit higher. That's just my personal preference. But I do like this laser because it goes through walls. Oh, boy. I love the fact that the game doesn't rely on damage on touch either, dude. I That's like, oh, my God. That's one of my hugest pet peeves. You guys know. You guys have watched me for years. One of my biggest pet peeves in video games is when you take damage from an enemy when they aren't in an attack animation. Like, I don't mind taking damage from an enemy that's, like, made out of spikes or is, like, made out of, yeah, let me... Let me go ahead. Oh, it only increased my capacity. Got you. I wonder if that persists because we're going to lose this laser rifle when we run out of ammo. I sort of wonder if that persists for the rest of the run. Like, if later on, when I find a laser gun, will it have the increased capacity just like the previous laser gun? If no, I recommend adding that. Oh, okay. I tried to dash out of it, but I was just a microsecond too late. And, like, I felt it in my fingers. You ever get that tactile gamer feeling? Like, in your fingers when you do a thing where you just, like, know you're going to get hit by something. Like, before the hit even lands, you just, you can feel it. Oh, they flew under my laser, too. Oh, that was the money laser right there. Money laser, I love thee. Oh, it won't go through the thick tiles, though. Oh, I timed it wrong. This might actually be easier with a spam gun. Yeah, I think it will be. I can't seem to get the timing right. I'm a little bit early. All right, so you do your thing. There we go. Ammo! Not really that helpful. It would be cool if you kept the empty gun on you, though, so you could reload the empty gun. Um, I don't exactly know what my plan is right now. Uh, run for my life, I guess, would be my plan. Oh, I jumped right into it, man. Okay, okay. I'm playing very, very poorly, but I, I did it again, dude. I did it again. Those explosive guys, I just, I don't know what it is about them, but the explosive guys, they get me every single time because I'm so focused on the fight and the movement and on the staying out of the way that they just, they tag me, man. They tag me bad. Whatever advantages we had on this run, it appears that I have squandered them. I don't know if I can snake anything right here. Oh, boy. Okay. Maybe get a little bit of damage off right there. There we go. Perfect. All right. What are you going to do for him? You're a gun shop. I got money for guns. A shotgun, a flamethrower. I'll take the shotgun. Shotgun sounds good. Give him a little bit of the old pump, pump pass. Uh, yeah, the shotgun is what's up. Okay. Glad to see the hitbox right there did not get me in trouble. I I had to do like a very narrow dodge around that hitbox, and I wasn't quite sure if it was going to be tight enough on the old sprite feedback to work. There we go. We'll go get him. I got 51 rounds left. I can always go up. A, oh, God. Okay. I, yeah, I got stuck to the wall. Pretty generous and vulnerable. Jumped right into it, dude. Jumped right into it. These are not the types of games that I normally play. These games right here get me into trouble with my fat fingeredness. All right, let's give it another run and we'll take... I don't think I actually have enough money to buy anything. Oh, I can. I can jump on enemies to do damage. Okay, yeah, I'll go for that. Why not? Back down into the dungeon. But yeah, very, very tight game. I'm actually kind of in awe of how tight this alpha is. I'm used to playing things that are very, very rough when they're in alpha phase. And in all honesty, this game is pretty tightly designed. Like, whoever made this knows how to make a platforming shooter uh, quite well. There's not a whole lot of aspects of this game that, like, I'm like, this could be better, that could be better. This is a tight gameplay experience, in my opinion. All right, let's see if we can get rid of you. Move that over to there, and we will drop down very, very shortly on... I was going to say, I got to bait him to... Sh can I shoot while I'm on a wall? Oh, I can. I can shoot while I'm on a wall. Okay, so we've already found the shops. That's probably a good thing. Oh, no, this wasn't a shop. Okay, so this is a room where something's going to uh, drop for me. Perfect. Lots of boom on the gun, too. Like, even the default pistol is like chug, 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 chug. It almost sounds like almost the sound effect you would use for, like, a 40K game for, like, a bolter. Like, it feels like it's got weight. It feels like it's got impact. 
like the screen shake. I'm normally not a big screen shake guy. Typically, the first thing I do in any video game is get rid of it. But this game has like a very, very light salting of screen shake. Like very, very small. You know when you're getting done cooking a dish and you just put that little pinch of salt on at the end? That just, you know, that decorative salt. That salt that just barely gives it a little bit of tang, but like makes the meal. That's kind of what they've done with the screen shake here. I'm actually okay with screen shake. Oh, he jumped off the wall instead of dropping through the platform. What I did right there is typically in games like this, you press down in the jump button in order to drop through platforms. But in this game, you drop through just by pressing down. And so anyways, because I did that right there, he gripped to the wall instead of dropping through. And so that was just like a control thing for me. I just put the wrong input in. All right, so let's go downwards. We've cleared out a little platform here. And I think we should just be able to bait and destroy those guys. I'm a little bit remiss about leaving those shops behind. I don't necessarily want to. Like, we have enough money to spend that maybe I should go back. I'm just going to do it the easy way. There we go. I was going to try to get him with the wall shot so that I could look like a John Wick badass. But unfortunately, it did not work out. Even the little running animation is done well. That slight compression right there, you see... When my character lands on the ground, it stretches and compresses the sprite in order to imply the impact. That's just that's just awesome. I just I like it. I like it a lot. There's so many little details here that are done just so positively and so well. This developer absolutely knows what they're doing when it comes to like game design in this genre because all the little details that I look for when I play a game like this Every time, the game's like, oh yeah, dude, I got you. Uh, I can increase my max HP by one. I can increase energy drops. I'm going to bump up my max HP. Oh, but it doesn't give you the heal. All right. I see you, game. I see you out here being like a little bit nice, but also a little bit mean. A little bit of sweet, a little bit of spicy. All right, all right, all right. Uh, let's carry this trip on downwards. Oh, boy. Okay. I'm amazed that I didn't get killed right there. I figured for sure I was taking damage. Oh, boy. Okay, straight through. Get some distance. Space them out with the slower mobs. Okay, dodge through that just because I don't think that I have the control to get through it without getting hit. And down. Oh, I dashed too far through and hit the one on the other side, dude. Oh. I like the difficulty of the game, though. Like, it's definitely... The arenas are kind of small. Like, one thing I always really liked about Nuclear Throne is just how large the arenas were. Like, I always found that the arenas being really, really big in... I'm sorry, not Nuclear Throne. Uh, I always found that in Neon Abyss. There we go. That's the game that I'm going to reference the most because that's what this reminds me of the furthest. Uh, but anyways, in Neon Abyss, one thing I always really, really liked about the game is how big the arenas are. I think this game could do with a little bit of that. I do think the arenas are a little tiny bit too small. On the plus side for the arenas being small, uh, small arenas do make the game a lot more precise and it does make the game a much more dodgy, frenetic kind of like red-eye experience. However, the larger arenas... I just, I like the ability to kind of like launch in between platforms and differentiated areas of the adventure, basically. Uh, and I always like that about Neon Abyss is that they had really, really big arenas that you would fight in. And the big arenas allowed you to do like creative things with the platforms and creative things with the guns that you had. Uh, new gun, a bouncer gun, a bullet that bounces on walls twice, a laser gun or a flame. I'm going to take the laser gun, I guess. Oof. Yeah, I was going to say, this arena is like the anti-laser. There we go. Got him. Figures, I get like the strongest horizontal weapon. Hey, a little bit of health. I get the strongest horizontal weapon, and then I end up in an arena that's up-down oriented. Ugh, gross. Okay, these little guys are a serious drain on my bullets with the laser. There we go. 
Oh, dude, another vertical arena. Try not to dash too far through on that last one so that I don't take a hit. I do like how the enemies, they don't actually die if you look. Well, they die, all right? They're dying, but they're like, they turn gray, and their debris and detritus starts to litter the floor of all the rooms that you're in. Another little detail, man. Another really good little detail. Uh, machine gun, hell yeah. To the boss. I don't even know. I've died so many times testing this game for this video, and I've never made it to the boss, so I have no idea what's going to happen. I'm just going to lay into him, dude. I've got a dope weapon right now, and I'm ready to use it. All right. Does he have another phase or something? Oh, Christ. Uh, yeah, I would say the answer to that question is absolutely yes. He does have other little phases that he's... Oh, dude, I'm getting torched right now. He's crowding me pretty good. Ooh. Okay, yeah, that might be problematic. Not in love with that situation. Uh, let me transition over to the other side. Oh, dude, no! I literally pushed the button to fire right. Right as that hit for the final kill, bro. Uh, this is Code Breakers. Uh, this game is dope. For an alpha demo, this is very, very promising. Uh, I think it's going to need another layer, so it needs, like, another hook. But, uh, for example, what I mean by... Let me, let me give you an example of what I mean by that. Uh, in Neon Abyss, you have the egg system and the weapon upgrading. Uh, so, like, you can take your guns from, like, level 1 all the way up to overpowered, clear the entire screen like level 8, you know what I mean? And then you've got the little eggs that hatch behind you that give you pets as you clear rooms, uh, that give you bonuses to, like, your HP or to your money gathering or whatever else. Uh, in Revita, you have the entire health trading system, uh, where you have to trade your health in order to get power-ups that make you stronger. So every time you get stronger, you're actively hurting yourself, and you've got to figure out a way to make up for that. Uh, the game is missing a hook like that. That's pretty much the only thing that I've noticed so far, is that this is a stunningly well-designed platforming shooter roguelike. Uh, but it does feel like it's missing a hook. And so anyways, that's my only observation about it. This is very promising developers. Uh, you should be very proud of what you've created here. This is a demo that, like, when I played it, I was, like, sitting back lazily in my chair. And as I got through, like, the second level, I started to, like, lean forward. And I started to, like, look at what I was playing and actually investigating and looking at the details. And I could already feel myself putting together commentary for a video because, like, this is good stuff right here. So anyways, thank you for joining me. I'm going to cut this video a little bit short because I think you've got the idea across already. I'm guessing that what's going to happen is as you beat bosses, new, new vendors end up coming to this outdoor area right here would be my estimate uh, i haven't got that far yet though because as you saw my first attempt against the boss went absolutely piss poor and i made a fool of myself so another glorious day on the internet for splattercat i'll catch you all tomorrow check the demo out you can play it for yourself uh it does play better with a controller in my opinion because the game does require some really precise movements that are hard to pull off uh with wasp for the platforming but like i said it controls perfectly fine uh, this is one of those games that this is, if I had my way, every demo I get sent would be this tight, this polished, this well designed, this well animated. This is quite good. But it's time for me to go. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we had Core Breakers. Tomorrow we will have something else. Thank you for joining me. That's about all I got, and I'll catch you tomorrow bright and early for something new. Bye, folks.